Guys, welcome back to the Zoe Podcast. And this is the prophecy of the moment. This is the prophecy of the moment on Ghana elections. And wait, 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 wait. You might have seen a lot of content surfacing the internet, but have they really gone into details what prophet is saying? Like I do it, right? Now, I'm an indigenous person, and I want to take you through the prophecy. Very detailed. What prophet exactly said about whether Baumia is the one who is going to take the charge or Muhammad is the one who is going to take the charge. And so, first of all, let's play the video and see what Prophet the Angel actually said. And I'm going to give you details on to what is really happening on the grounds when you go to Ghana. Let's go. I want, I want everyone, everyone who is a relative, a case on your, your phone, phone, or documents, just raise it up high. Raise it up high, raise it up high. It might be representing something you are facing now. Viewers all over the world, this is your opportunity. This that shall begin to happen shall be a thing that the Lord has made. That he is looking at the nation of Ghana with an eye that is open. And his eye is centered at looking at a country that is ravaged by economic struggles. Not because it is supposed to face it, but because they are agencies. Spiritual movements that the enemy has already created, that the country has not moved in the area that it needed to move in. Because whenever God gives an assignment to a president, the church has to enact his will. So many people think that when the Lord discusses a matter with prophets and says, this one is going to rule, it means that person is going to rule well just because God said he's going to rule. No. The Bible says it this way, that it is... The altar that sanctifies the gift, not the gift that sanctifies the altar. That means the position of the presidency is what is anointed. And the man that sits there, you choose him. And he's sanctified by the altar of the presidency. You are not hearing what I'm saying. So God spoke to me. And you heard me speak clearly. No failure. I spoke God's word. He told me if Muhammad does not call me in 10 days, he will not be president. And he did not call me. So for me, that was settled already. He will not be president. He did not call. That was settled. 100% settled. I had no doubt in my mind. 10 days. Within a few hours, his people called me, but he did not call. I don't have a problem with anyone not calling me. I'm the one who hears from God. And my position doesn't need voting in. Now hear this. Hear this. And I understand perhaps there were areas. And let me just explain to you something. I don't blame nobody for anybody for not calling me. I don't blame that. Because his son actually went to our ministry in, a, in London. Is a friends, is friends with Sia. So perhaps in that line he thought he had conducted me. The chief of staff called me. Perhaps in that conducting me, they thought they had conducted me. But I told them exactly that if your boss does not call, it's already signed, sealed, delivered to Baumia. I said it. In the same vein, in the weeks that came, I had a prophecy for a man called Kabila. And God told me he should contact you or his people should contact you within 10 days. If he doesn't, you will die. I said it. Do you know how, how many minutes they took? They were already calling while I was prophesying. That's true, sir. While we were alive. While we were alive, people were calling from all areas. 
and I'd already made a direction. You do this, you do this, you do this, and you cross this direction, and you do this, and do this. Including the direction. It is within that same 10 days. See, in that time, from the time I said it, that they went and looked for him at his house, shot up the place, burned the place, his own house in Congo. The same place I said within 10 days. You don't call me within those 10 days, you die. Did I arrange with the people that went to shoot? Do I own armies to go and do it? And that one listened. Am I talking to you? That one listened. It happened again when I was in, when I was in, in Dubai. And I sent the routers a message. This man is arranging. Is arranging demonstrations. And this is the day he has not told you. This is the, and the message came in. Is this really Prophet Hubert Angel? I said, I'm going to call and say this is Hubert Angel. You know my voice. I called. It was in, I was in church. I called. I said, this is Hubert Angel. They said, oh, it's you, sir. Put down. And let me tell you one thing. Everything I do, you know, because politicians get born again twice before every election. I record every conversation because I know they wake up and refuse because it's political genius which is political foolishness. So you challenge what I say. I wake up tomorrow. It will be on all the blogs. Because I don't want you to be challenging it. But if you challenge it, I challenge you back. In the same way you show your foolishness, I am very capable of suspending my divinity to line up with your foolishness. So here it is. Ten days. And I had seen it. You know why God wanted Mahama? Very simple. He literally told me it wasn't just about his voice. He is the Christian side of it. He said, I have a hint in what Ghana is doing. And I've used the Ghana to spread my mandate around the world. And it rests in a certain location and position that God has put it and said, Ghana is a leader when it comes to spiritual matters. That people would give another country the credit and say, this is the one. He said, this is why I put the prophetic deep in Ghana. He said, from ages past, I did it. Because I set it as a watcher when it comes to the prophetic. From the ages beyond, before I moved things around the world and spread the prophetic, I started with anchoring it with Ghana. So I said, Lord, what is it? He said, it's not the Christian part of it. Although it includes the Christian part of it. But it says, the man, I weighed his heart for the nation. And I looked at things that they called mistakes he has done in weaknesses. And I weighed them against his heart. And I said, there was an intention for good in him that can push the country of Ghana to a higher degree. Said so the problem that is happening in Gaia, Ghana is identity politics. Where people say, I'm this one. I'm this political party. They are not looking at my will. Said, so, but I want to change Ghana. I have a heart. And I said, I'm going to pray. I went to the prayer mountain there. As I was there, I said, I'm praying. I want to pray. God, have you locked the door because the man has not called me in 10 days? Who am I? I'm just you, very angel. Said, you represent me and the man failed to respect and honor that. Hear me well. Hear me well now. You were waiting for this prophecy. So listen to it carefully. And the Lord said to me, after I prayed and I prayed and I looked, you see, there was, it was a cover given to me 
of all the qualities of Mahama that would change Ghana. I said, if this is the quality of this man, and you are saying these are the right ones, can it not get a second chance for this man? And God said, I'm going to give you two names of people you already have access to. Two names. When I say access to, it doesn't mean say I spoke to these people. I was speaking to these people. No, I wasn't. But I knew how to get a hold of them. Said you speak to Archbishop. And then you speak to a prophet, Prophet Owusubemba. He said, these are the authorities I put in the land of Ghana. Now watch this. He said, you put the matter before them of this 10-day timeline. When you put the matter before them, guess what? Cause them to speak to me about it and leave it with Ghana. You leave it with these two people and they will speak to him. And then they will speak to me to reverse the 10-day timeline. And when I listen to them and I hear them, if I tell them it is so, then it is reversed. So Wallace, you were waiting for me to give you Ghana. God gave me two men that you have to reverse it. To line up with the 10 days. It was guaranteed. You call within 10 days. We will not be here now talking about this. Call within 10 days. You are president. Whether you are evil or good or bad, you are president. Call. Simple call. Hello, I have called. You think mine is wanting a president to call me? I have presidents who are spiritual sons. Just now, we, in a few weeks, we're going to visit one of my sons who is a president. Yes, you see me there. And we've already been given people who are in the opposition parties in other countries that God said, I'm going to change and put this one as the leader. And these people are already our sons. Do you understand what I'm talking about? He has caused that to be able to put people in power, remove some. So you hear me here coming here, not prophesying, no, declaring judgments on presidents to remove them. Not prophecy. No. Coming here to say, who is the president of this country? Ah, uh, you said what? Guinea-Bissau. Okay, no problem. You say Gambia. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, do we like him? We don't. We, I will come here and say, we are removing him. You will know who you bedanjo is. Because you don't agree, but you will see the evidence. You don't know our capacities. This is not pride talking. It's grace bestowed upon a man, upon a mouth that can decree and remove a present, put another one. New one you have never seen, you see, uh-uh. But we will do it here. We will remove them here, put new ones. We are not going to be prophesying now about these presidents. We are going to remove them, put new ones. So this is what God said about Ghana. He said, I know his will and his heart for Ghana. He said, it's beyond others. You know, I'm speaking like this. The 10-day window lapsed. This is a good thing. 10-day window lapsed. Do you know who called me? The ruling party. Uh, uh, has he called you? I said, no. <laughs> they said, but, but we have called. <laughs> See, it is paramount. Let me tell you one thing. It is paramount that when the people who have been put in my vision as the people that have the power, 
after analyzing whatever they need to analyze, to shift and change it and put it back into the favor of the 10 days. That when they speak, you also listen. Because the battle for Ghana is a spiritual battle between evil and holiness. Between righteousness and evil. And the capacity has been raised for Ghana. For them to look beyond the power to bring wealth, to bring this and to bring that and to bring this. Says the man you have in front of you is a changed man. A man who has seen the areas that he could have improved in his previous administration and can shift events. But there are people that might have said to him, um, oh, I know Hubert Angel has said this and they never send the word. And I said, is it because of me? He said, no. There are many men of God that you begin to meet. That if this man who need what I need and want what I want, like what I like, I will shift Ghana that nobody will look at his neighbors and say it is lower than his neighbor. They will begin to see a nation changed. A nation changed. So I've shown the qualities of Mahama. Then he said, this is my choice. I gave a rule. Ten days, he didn't call. But I've given a chance for this to, to establish what it is. And then when the reasons be adequate, they will speak to me. And if they speak to me and I hear them, I will reverse it that it will look like as, as if he is called within the ten day window. And as for America, Wow, that is quite uh, a lot of details and information right there to break down. Wow, honestly, I'm here to do that. I'm, I'm just ready to do that, right? And I don't want to digress, not to beat about a bush. Let's just get, let's just go straight to the point. I mean, straight to the point. Now, first on my on the list, I want to talk about in Ghana. Prophet mentioned. Um, Identity politics. Identity politics is everywhere, though. But in Africa, most especially in my country, Ghana, I want to talk about Ghana, identity politics is very critical. And I believe this is a matter where it has to go beyond that. Because if we, the youth, and we as people, we as indigenous people of this country, want a change in the country, it has to do or go beyond identity politics. Because as such, we are still, you know, creating nothing good but shambles. Destru destruction, I mean. And so, if we are able to go beyond identity politics, it means to say that we are going where God wants us to go. Basically, I mean, if God wants Mama to be president, Shout out to be president or any other person who is standing for the presidency, uh, um, you know, competition to be president. It means to say that the dominant people will say, okay, I come from this region. I come from this tribe. But then, F it. I don't care about this, this person, even though he is my countryman he's coming from my tribe or he's coming from my region. What I care about is what God wants. And so this statement that I made, if we as Ghanaians will basically think in that manner, it means we are going beyond what? Identity politics. It has to go beyond party affiliations. And that's what Prophet said about identity politics of Ghana. You are not coming from Ghana, so you just see it as a mere thing he said, but that is a very dangerous thing right there. Affecting this country, you know, for a very long time. We do identity politics with our our parliamentary candidates and our, you know, ministerial appointments and all that. 
identity politics. We appoint people in this country for for to occupy ministerial roles and and parliamentary roles based on oh this person is indigenous this person is our person it's good to you know appoint somebody who is your person but can the person do the job but in ghana we find people being appointed who can't do their job but they are appointed because they are coming from a particular group of people maybe he is coming from the ashanti region he's coming from this place he's coming from that place and we are also ashantis so let's appoint him and so that is the identity politics right there. It's very dangerous. It has destroyed our country and destroyed even Africa. Now let's go to Muhammad dishonoring the court to call Prophet by Angel. Okay, you have been asked to call. And I was in a broadcast on that faithful day when Prophet by Angel gave the prophecy uh, about Muhammad calling. That video is even on this channel. And Prophet Ibe Angel asked Muhammad to call. And he even categorically stated that he doesn't want the team to call. He wants Muhammad himself to call. He stated categorically. Now, so I thought, okay, people are watching. A lot of, if it's not uh, um, Muhammad himself watching, a lot of people who are connected to the man are watching. Prophet Ibe Angel is, is that guy. Okay, so I just, ask, you see, this is a prophecy with condition. Like in the Bible days, they, I'm going to reference this where, you know, one prophet asked, you know, the king to, you know, do some direction by, you know, the king is an Israelite king, right? Do a direction. I, I, I've forgotten a story into details. Unless I reference, uh, unless I go back to it. So you have to, you know, perform an action for a number of times that the prophet didn't give the king. So he just asked him to perform the action and then he's going to beat, you know, his enemies. That is Israelites I'm talking about. Right? And he did this just a couple of times and he stopped. And the prophet told him, ah, you could have done it, you know, quite a normal. Because the number of times you do it is the number of times you are going to defeat these Philistines and your, your enemies. Right? This is this is prophecy with 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 you know instructions. Whereby when the instruction is given you, you have to just obey it. Sometimes the instruction, most of the time, you see, this 10 days thing that maybe prophets said, sometimes it's not even God who asks him to say 10 days. But he is a prophet. He's giving you the information. All right? And he, he knows what he has seen in the realms. And he's giving you condition. This is the only condition. Abide by it. We move on. So he just said uh, in, the, in, the, in the broadcast that, see, if you are, if, if, if you've really obeyed these things, like we wouldn't even be here. We wouldn't even be here. You see? So I think, what do you think about that? Muhammad dishonored, you know, the fact that he's supposed to call Prophet Ibe Angel. I mean, how busy? Don't get me wrong. Muhammad will definitely be busy because he's, they are into campaigns and all that. Back and forth, up and downs. But trust me, Prophet Ibe Angel is not that guy that you substitute or you look down upon and say, okay, you guys could take care of him and then I will do these other things. I mean, come on. Somebody who is having, let's talk about social media. Go look at his social media following. Just a social media following. Then, then, then that is in the physical, like what you could just, oh, let's see the numbers, right? Let, then we go into other things, spiritual things, miraculous things. You know, let's move to the next thing. So, the next thing is that Prophet Behind your asking, Mama to call. He didn't call. The team did. During the 10 day period, the MPP called. The ruling party, MPP. So it means to say Baumia called. As to whether Baumia himself called or the team called, he didn't disclose that, but they called. 
You see, when failure wants to pursue you, Yesterday, I posted on my status, why didn't mama call in the angel? Just why? But I was like, if failure is pursuing you, you see? Now, the next thing is um, mama's turn. Let's talk about mama's turn. So, mama's turn was uh, in, is in, is in 2012 to 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, right? No, 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 16, something like that, right? Let, let me look it up. Good. Mama's turn. Let me look at this. So 20, July to 2017, January 7th, 2017. Yeah, I'm right about that. And that is when you see President Atamios was that guy leading the charge from 208. From 208 into 2012 upon his demise. That, you know, uh, obviously, Mahama is supposed to take charge because he did three and, let's say, half ten, three and a half years, sorry, and before his demise, and Mahama have to take over. He took over. We went into the next election in 2012. He won and was president for, the, for his first term from 2012 to 2017. Elections were conducted. 2016, December 7th, and he lost to Nana Kufuado. Nana Kufuado took the baton, won the elections, first term and second term. All these years, Mama has been trying to come back for his second term, which is going to be basically eight years, like Trump. Trump won against Hillary Clinton. He did his first term. Now Biden took over and did what? Win. Did his first term. Now Biden is supposed to do his second term. But because of aging and other circumstances, he's redrawing. Now Kamala is taking over. So Kamala is now coming for his first term. But Biden is coming for his second term. Like Muhammad. Oh, but Trump, rather. Trump is coming for his second term, like Mahama. So Trump and Mahama are in the same soup. Now, so that's Mahama's term. Somebody was like, ah, Mahama has already been a president. Why, why is he coming again? I just explained that to you. Now, Prophet Uber Angel mentioned, you know, two, two uh, you know, spiritual religious leaders in our country, Ghana, that He's supposed to have, you know, a conversation with. So as to say he will forgive the 10 days dishonor from Mahama, right? Now, somebody will say, why is he contacting these two? <laughs> so he's contacting Osu Bempa because when it comes to the prophetic, most Ghanaians don't even know what I'm talking about. But Prophet Uber Angel have already disclosed this years ago that when it comes to the prophetic, in the fashion that we see him do it, in the fashion that has now surfaced the whole internet and surfaced the whole of Africa, it has been started by Osu Bempa. And that man is coming from Ghana. So to speak, when it comes to the prophetic, this man of God, Osu Bempa, Prophet Osu Bempa, controls the realm. In the prophetic. Now let's come to Archbishop. Archbishop is <laughs> Archbishop, apparently. Archbishop means someone who is having basically more than a hundred bishops under him. Archbishop is gold. Archbishop is like Archbishop Benson in the house of Nigeria. You see the number of bishops he's ordained. And Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams is a son to Archbishop Benson Daosa, who passed on a couple of years ago, I mean many years ago. Why? He controls the realms in both the apostolic. He has ordained 
great men of God, go and do your due diligence. The bishops that came under, I don't know the number of people who knows Archbishop, uh, no, Archbishop, Bishop Dagwood Mills, a lot of bishops, I can't even remember their names right now. Big, big, big people. This man ordained them, Archbishop Nicholas. And so, Prophet Uber Angel have picked the one, that, that, that major religious leader who controls the prophetic realm, and the one that controls everything in general, which is Archbishop. So, these are the people who he's seeking to hear from. Okay, what should... All right, bring your petition on board. What do you think about me forgiving Mahama his 10 days failure to call me? If these people are going to say what they are going to say, that prophet of the angel will listen to, okay, that's nice. I'm going to listen to you guys. I'm just going to allow Mahama to come in. And you guys think maybe it's a joke, like joke. Who is prophet of the angel? Who do you think, who does he think he is? He can't do anything. What he's seen is what he's seen. Well, all these uh, 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 gymnastics and all these things doesn't make sense. You don't know what you're talking about. Have you have you seen these informations like he's seen it? And so if he says, that's why I was categorically stating uh, previously that the 10 days, right? The 10 days timeline, the time frame that Prophet the Angel gave to Muhammad. I can tell you for a fact that God didn't ask him to give that 10 days. In fact, God even might not even have asked him to even give any time frame or any timeline to Mahama. But he's doing his own thing. And so he decides what to do. It's like somebody comes to your office, I want, I want, I want employment. When they slap the document, their CV and all that on your table, you decide, okay, I've, I've, I've seen it. I'll call you in 10 days. I'll call you in this, this normal of days. He decides it. And so sometimes, Prof, you see the Kabila thing. Okay, you are going to die. But I'm, I'm giving you up to 10 days. Call me. Because these are people of high profile. And so you have to test their ego. Whether they will obey, they will honor God. So this 10 days thing might not have been God's information given to Angel to give to Mahama. But it is Mahama giving to these people. Mahama is, is Prophet of the Angel giving to Mahama and Kabila these 10 days just to see? These people are high profile people. Who they obey, put their ego and pride aside and obey. And that's exactly what he did. And you see, obviously, failed. And one thing that Prophet of the Angel said that caught my attention so much, he said, You see, these people, they have Christians around them. They have so to say, prophets and pastors around them. These pastors and prophets, in quotes, might have been stopping them from reaching out to you. But you don't know that. Just because the prophecy is not coming from there, ah, don't go. See? So, this is a real deal. 10 days, reversal with Archbishop and Bempa, Ousu Bempa, Prophet Ousu Bempa, 10 days reversal, now rest with them. Whatever they are going to tell Prophet of the Angel now changes everything. Guys, my name is Chuda Nixon. I've just break down everything into details like you have to know it, right? Make sure you subscribe, share, like this video. I'm out.